Each year, over 500,000 kids spend time in foster care across the U.S., and making sure they're well taken care of takes a village. I'm Erin Lindstrom, and this is Foster Care Aware, a production brought to you by Tidewater Friends of Foster Care. If you've had it on your heart to become a foster parent, a volunteer, donor, advocate, or just want to learn more, you're in the right place. This episode of Foster Care Aware is brought to you by Intercept Health, whose mission is to elevate others to live their healthiest lives. If you're interested in becoming a foster parent through Intercept Health, they pride themselves on working with you at times that work for you, whether that's morning, afternoon, evening, or weekends. They're looking for families who are flexible. They can be married, single, widowed, or divorced. You just have to be over 21 years of age, have a monthly income that's enough to pay your monthly expenses, and be able to pass background checks. Intercept Health is looking for diverse people because their children are all unique and diverse as well. They primarily need families who are willing and able to persevere with children and youth coming to them with traumatic backgrounds. To learn more, please go to intercepthealth.com or call 757-636-3277. Welcome back to Foster Care Aware. I am Erin Lindstrom and I am joined by Audra Bullock, the founder and president of Tidewater Friends of Foster Care. Hey, Erin. Hi. Oh, it's our wrap up episode of Foster Care Aware 2021. We're here. We did it. I can't believe it's gone by so quickly. It has gone by so quickly. And like what an incredible month it's been. The conversations, I feel like the caliber and the quality have just been so rich this year. And I'm excited to just kind of go over some of the things that really stood out to us. Perfect. Let's do it. Let's do it. So the first major thing that really stood out to me as we went through was the concept of, or really the question and curiosity around like what's happening behind, beyond the behavior. Yeah. And this came up in the context of children who, children and youth, right. Who are in care and sometimes self-sabotage or just act in ways that almost don't make sense to our little minds that aren't thinking through everything that's happening, right? Yeah, that's right. And and I think what we learned was that these behaviors are messages and the message is, I'm scared. I need to feel safer. And there's a lot in my life that I'm not in control of and I need somebody to help me feel secure enough to talk about it. Because, and I might not know how to talk about it, by the way, right? In my, my family of origin, we might not have constructive ways to communicate our feelings. So I need your help to do this. And, and I think that lens on viewing these behaviors helps a foster parent to really meet the underlying need rather than becoming triggered themselves. It's absolutely very common. And I think this is one of the biggest reasons that not, children not only bounce from home to home, um, but that foster parents hang up. Um, absolutely. They feel like they can't get through to a child. But the other thing that we learned is that a child can only heal and learn to discuss constructively their feelings and their fears in the context of a family. It can't right. happen on their own. It can't happen in a group setting. It really needs to be one-on-one inside a family. Yeah. And that one always strikes me too, because the trauma that, that really ignites a child coming into foster care is usually within the family. And then the healing also takes place in a family. Wow. So right. Go, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because they don't know about this other family that's going to take care of them. Right. Right. And so just thinking about the, beyond the behavior, I think having that perspective of like, oh, even being inside of a loving family is traumatizing in itself, in it, out of, in it and of itself, um, because it is change and it is different and it requires trust and attachment, which that takes time to build. And I think John Murray mentioned, like, it takes 18 months to really fully see those changes inside the brain. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it is 18 months of co-regulation, meaning that you have a regulated adult with a, with a child who is dysregulated and you maintain your regulation, you mean it's, it's, it's being patient, it's being accepting of their feelings and, and um, you know, behaviors, mm-hmm. acknowledging them, being curious about what makes it happen and being empathetic to these children. Yeah. And you got to do that for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. And with that, so now we're talking about the need for parents 
foster parents or other people in a foster child's life to be regulated. Yes. And what that means is kind of like having a healthy mindset, being in an okay place where you have the energetic capacity to take care of a child with needs, right? Which is all children. Um, and that really requires a level of self-awareness and self-care to even have the capacity to be in situations like this where you might be triggered, you might be stressed out. And so to really be able to stay grounded and to see beyond the behavior that requires you being able to show up and take care of yourself. That's right. Because what happens when you don't is you lose your top and then all of a sudden this is an untenable situation and the child has to move. And that is the worst thing for them because just like John and Mary said, there's an attachment that starts to form and the attachment is how these children heal. And when that's disrupted again in a foster home, it puts the child that much further back in having to build another attachment, but layers on, um, or puts on layers of mistrust. I can't trust anybody else in this next home. So why don't I just go ahead and get this over with by sabotaging this home and go to where I can feel like I'm safe? Right. There's so many layers here to kind of like pull back. And I think in our episode where we talked about foster parent training, one of the things that kind of came up there was just as how it changes you as a human. And so regardless of your outcome, you can go through foster parent training and decide this isn't for me, but you will have been changed just by learning about how to understand people in a different way, how to not just look at circle, for surface level behavior and really think about, hmm, why would someone act like this? Right. What, is, what do, are those triggers? What are the needs of a human that might not be met or that that child is afraid are not going to be met. So they're making it happen, right? Like they're looking for stability, looking for shelter. And sometimes that is by disrupting um, the place and it gives they're you in. A sense of control of your own life when you, you can take the reins and kind of look deeper and not be reactionary. Because I think a lot of times when we get triggered ourselves, heart rate goes up, we start to get hot and flush. And then all of a sudden we're wound up and we, after we come down, we feel a little bit bruised. You know what I mean? We don't feel good about what just happened. Being able to not be triggered in those situations by understanding what is going on in a child that's exhibiting behaviors or another human adult that's exhibiting behaviors really gives you a sense of empowerment. So I have personally grown so much by becoming a foster parent. I know my family has, our marriage has grown. It really is an amazing gift um, to the people that enter into this journey. Mm -hmm. So wherever you are on this journey, you've made it thus far. So congratulations and thank you for being here with us. And as always, I wanna invite you into the village if you haven't joined yet. It is a Facebook group where we talk about different things that are happening in foster care. Um, there are opportunities to help locally and and in the moment, there are also long-term volunteer opportunities that you can learn about. You can connect with different art organizations doing work here. Um, if you are interested in being a foster parent, Tidewater Friends of Foster Care, Care has their perspective parent program um, and they're doing a live version in June. And what that means is if you have thought about being a foster parent and want to kind of talk through your options and figure out next steps, join us. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I like fun things. So this will be fun and interactive and really just an opportunity to learn more so you can then make the best choice for you and your family. And that might look like fostering as a family. It might look like becoming a CASA. It might look like volunteering. It might look like being like, yeah, this isn't the time for me. However, my family would love to pitch in and buy Christmas gifts for a sibling group. And wherever you kind of land, that is perfect. And we just appreciate you being a part of this and sharing the word because there are so many people who consider fostering who don't take action. And that's usually because they don't have enough information to make the best choice for them. So please, if you have a minute, go ahead and share this episode, whether you're on Facebook or share a podcast episode with someone that you know is always listening while they're on the go um, to help us make a difference. Thank you so much to everybody who's joined us this entire month. Thank you to all of our supporters and thank you to our board of directors for their immense guidance in, in this tremendous project of awareness. And, and thank you, Aaron and Derek and Danielle, my team who put this together. This has been an extraordinary summit. We really, really appreciate you.
Absolutely. Thank you everyone for joining us. Please remember to share and for more information about anything here, you can go to fostercareaware.org and tidewaterffc.org will house all of the other information about the incredible programs that Tidewater Friends of Foster Care is doing within our community and beyond. And we hope to see you again next year. And a big thank you for listening. Foster Care Aware is all about getting the word out about how you can support the kids in care in whatever capacity works for you. And Tidewater Friends of Foster Care is here to support you through the journey. To learn more, head over to fostercareaware.org where you can join our digital community of Friends of Foster Care and learn more about how you can provide a birthday or holiday gift for a child in care as one of our gift sponsors, stay in the know about upcoming trainings, and help meet the needs of current foster parents and youth as they arise. Whether you want to be a foster parent, volunteer, donor, or advocate, head on over to fostercareaware.org to learn more.